हॅलो एव्हरी वन ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मायक्रोबायोलॉजी तुझाराम चतुर्चंद कॉलेज आय वुड लाईक टू एक्सटेंड अ वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ॲट दिस नॅशनल वेबिनार इट इज माय ग्रेट प्लेचर टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर टू डे स्पीकर डॉक्टर हेमंत पाटील सर डॉक्टर हेमंत पाटील सर इज अ चीफ सायंटिस्ट अँड वर्किंग ॲज हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मायक्रोबायोलॉजी इन कृष्णदूत बाय हार्कल्स प्रायव्हेट लिमिटेड ॲट नाशिक सर हॅज कम्प्लिटेड हिज बी एस सी अँड एम एस सी इन मायक्रोबायोलॉजी सर हॅज कम्प्लिटेड हिज पी एच डी इन टू थाउजंड सिक्स टू टू थाउजंड इलेवन ॲट नॅशनल ब्युरो ऑफ ॲग्रिकल्चरली इम्पॉर्टंट मायक्रो ऑर्गॅनिझम ॲट माऊ उत्तर प्रदेश सर हॅज ऑल्सो कम्प्लिटेड हिज पोस्ट ऑफ रिसर्च इन टू थाउजंड फिफ्टीन टू टू थाउजंड सेवन्टीन ॲट ॲग्रिकल्चरल रिसर्च ऑर्गनायझेशन ॲट इस्रायल इन टू थाउजंड ट्वेल्व टू टू थाउजंड फोर्टीन सर हॅज वर्क ॲज हेड ऑफ अकॅडमिक अफेअर्स ॲट राय युनिव्हर्सिटी इन गुजरात अँड सिन्स टू थाउजंड एटीन सर इज अ चीफ सायंटिस्ट अँड वर्किंग ॲज हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मायक्रोबायोलॉजी इन कृष्णद बायो हार्बल्स प्रायव्हेट लिमिटेड ॲट नाशिक वन्स अगेन आय वेलकम यू टू सर नाव आय रिक्वेस्टेड टू डॉक्टर हेमंत पाटील सर टू डेलिव्हर हिज लेक्चर थँक्यू हॅलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट बायो फर्टिलायझर्स अँड बायो पेस्टिसाइड्स सो अवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज मायक्रोबियल इनॉक्युलंट्स मॉडर्न एरा ऑफ फर्टिलायझर अँड पेस्टिसाइड सो फ्रेंड्स आय होप यू ऑल नो वॉट इज बायो फर्टिलायझर अँड बायो पेस्टिसाइड मीन्स इट इज बायो फर्टिलायझर इज नॉट अ न्यू कन्सेप्ट इफ वी सी बॅक इन द हिस्ट्री इट इज अ व्हेरी ओल्ड कन्सेप्ट अँड व्हेरी ओल्ड प्रॅक्टिस ॲग्रिकल्चरल प्रॅक्टिस इट इन्वॉल्व्स ॲडिशन ऑफ बेनिफिशियल मायक्रो ऑर्गॅनिझम्स टू द ॲग्रिकल्चरल सॉईल ऑर लँड फॉर बेटर प्लांट हेल्थ अँड अल्टिमेटली बेटर हिल्ड सो मायक्रो ऑर्गॅनिझम्स विच वी ॲड ॲज अ बायो फर्टिलायझर आर स्पेशली दोज हु हेल्प द प्लांट्स टू अपटेक द न्यूट्रियंट्स सच ॲज फॉस्फरस पोटॅशियम nitrogen micronutrients and other nutrients so uh, bio fertilizer concept goes back in the history around 300 before crisis when our ancestors realized the importance of legume crops such as groundnut soybean which bears nodules in their roots the perspective of bio fertilizer came into existence through the discovery of many organisms who are having capability of nitrogen fixation phosphorus solubilization potassium mobilization other micronutrient transformation in the soil the role of bio fertilizers which assumes special significance just because the increased cost of chemical fertilizers and also the ill effects of the chemical fertilizers on soil as well as human health so uh, technically we can define bio fertilizers it refers to the formulation having live microbes which helps enhancing the soil fertility either by fixing atmospheric nitrogen or solubilizing phosphorus or decomposing organic waste or by augmenting plant growth by producing growth hormones with their biological activities so advantages of bio fertilizers there are so many advantages of bio fertilizers over chemical fertilizers if we see they are a renewable source of nutrients facilitator as we can produce and reproduce these uh, beneficial microorganisms in the laboratory again and again they can call as a renewable source of nutrients facilitator this supports sustainable soil health as far as we know there are no harmful effects re- reported uh, using bio fertilizers in the field it supports sustainable soil health it acts as a supplement for chemical fertilizers friends if we add chemical fertilizers to the soil very less fraction of these chemical fertilizers are get utilized by the plant roots but major fraction of these chemical fertilizers is being chemically blocked by some other chemical reactions in the soil and it cannot be available to the plant roots but if we use bio fertilizers along with the chemical fertilizers these bio fertilizers can facilitate those blocked form of chemical fertilizers to the plant roots 
it replaces chemical fertilizers at maximum possible. As we saw in the previous point, uh, most of the chemical fertilizers get blocked in the soil. If we use half or even less dose of the chemical fertilizers along with the biofertilizers, the most of the percentage can be utilized by the plant roots and hence we can reduce the uh, chemical fertilizers uses. It increases the grain yields by 10 to 40 percent. There are so many studies have been recorded in the reports and we can see we can say that the 10 to 40 percent of the grains yield can be increased using biofertilizers. One of the additional benefit of using biofertilizer is decomposition potential. It can decompose the plant residues in the soil and stabilizes the carbon nitrogen ratio which helps growing other beneficial microorganisms in the rhizosphere region and also helps facilitating the nutrients to the plant root. It improves texture, structure and water holding capacity of soil. So we can say overall it improves the soil health. There are no adverse effect on plant growth and soil fertility. So using biofertilizers uh, as we saw there is no harmful effect on the soil or plant growth. It also stimulates the plant growth by secreting growth hormones. Friends, many of the biofertilizer microorganisms are producing so many plant growth hormones or auxins which we uh, add as a chemical in the soil. So if we use such a biofertilizer microorganisms, there is no need to add such auxins or hormones for the extra plant growth. It secretes secret fungistatic and antibiotic like substances. As we saw that bacteria or microorganisms using as a biofertilizers are the living entity. So they are having their friends and foes in the rhizosphere region. So by natural activity, they are having good or as well as bad relation with the bad or harmful organism. So they can they have abilities to fight against those harmful microorganisms and hence for that purpose, they secrete some antibiotic like compound or fungistatic com uh, compounds which can help plant to get uh, protection from the harmful organisms or microorganisms. It solubilizes and mobilizes many forms of nutrients like phosphorus and potassium or other micronutrients. And uh, the very important is this use of biofertilizer is eco-friendly, non-pollutant and cost effective for farmers and hence it helps increasing the yield as well as uh, giving economic benefit to the farmers. So let's have a look on the biofertilizer organisms. There are so many organisms uh, beneficial for the plant growth. So first is rhizobium. Rhizobium are the organisms which are symbiotically associated with the root nodules. If you, I hope you have seen the groundnut or the soybean or other leguminous family plant roots in which we can see nodules. In these nodules, these organisms are symbiotically associated. In this case, the plants get benefited from the uh, microorganisms and the microorganisms get benefited from the plants for nutrients and the nitrogen respectively. There are other free living nitrogen fixing bacteria like Azotobacter or Azospirillum, which can which are also associated in the rhizosphere but not symbiotically and they are also facilitating the nitrogen in the free form to the plant roots for easy uptake. There is one more category of phosphate solubilizing bacteria. These bacteria are making available the phosphorus in the free form for the plant roots for easy uptake. Otherwise, if we see the phosphorus molecules are chemically bound in the unavailable form in the soil and hence plant roots cannot uptake them easily. Blue-green algae. This is also kind of protein-rich microorganisms or they are algae. Uh, they are mostly used as an animal feed. Vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza, they are also kind of fungus. As we saw earlier as rhizobium, these mycorrhiza are also symbiotically associated with the plant roots and hence they are called as a mycorrhiza. Myco means roots and rhiza means a uh, myco means fungus and rhiza means roots. So the fungus which is associated with the roots that is called as mycorrhiza. So mycorrhiza is beneficial for the plants 
in various ways like it facilitates the phosphorus other nutrients and micronutrients as well as the water for the plant roots so classification of biofertilizer friends based on functions biofertilizer can be classified as nitrogen fixation phosphorus solubilizing bacteria microbes or uh, for other functions so if we uh, focus on nitrogen fixers there are some bacteria as well as blue green alga who functions for the nitrogen fixation in bacteria rhizobium which we earlier saw symbiotically associated with the plant roots especially in the leguminous plants azotobacter azospirillum they are free living nitrogen fixing bacteria few species of bacillus they are sometimes associated freely or sometimes they are uh, act as endophytes and helps plant available, available nitrogen uh, in blue green alga anabina nostoc tolifothrix and anabinopsis are few genera who works for the nitrogen fixation there are few species of azola like azola filiculoides and azola rubra which can be cultivated for the animal feed purpose then phosphorus solubilizing microbes vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza as we saw earlier plant growth promoting rhizobacteria pgpr sometimes pseudomonas also act as a pgpr these microorganisms produces some beneficial hormones or plant root molecules which helps plants growing well then sulfur solubilizing microbes so based on functions there are categories of bio fertilizers so bio fertilizer production friends if we have to see how bio fertilizer is being produced we can we have to follow this protocol so it starts from the isolation of beneficial microorganism from near plant roots or soils because if we see we have to apply these microorganisms in the rhizosphere and hence this the source of these microorganisms should be from the same field so isolation is the first step of the biofertilizer production then laboratory screening of the microbes for plant growth as we saw in the previous slide that there are various categories of the biofertilizers like phosphorus solubilizing potassium mobilizing nitrogen fixing or other micronutrients facilitating microorganism so friends in laboratory we can screen the potential beneficial microorganisms based on some laboratory assays like picoscas agar this media is used for screening the phosphorus solubilizing bacteria if we go back to this slide number 7 we can see the zones of clearance formed surrounded by the colonies these zones of clearance are indicating that the growth the microbial growth as a form in the form of colony has solubilizes the phosphorus in the surrounding zone or surrounding area similarly potassium solubilizing bacteria can be screened using alexandro agar then there are few laboratory assays for nitrogen fixing bacteria or other micronutrient facilitating microorganisms then next step will be the greenhouse screening of microbes now this is very important step of checking the benefits of biofertilizer microorganism so if we have to check whether these biofertilizer microorganisms are working well in the natural environment greenhouse is the best suitable model because the growth conditions in the greenhouse are slightly beneficial or controlled in the, uh, in the view of growing microorganisms then next step will be the field screening of most effective microbes the microorganisms which are found potential in the greenhouse studies can be further developed at the large scale and check for the effectivity in the actual agricultural field then refinement of the inoculum we can refine the inoculum as per the potential grades like more beneficial organisms can be 
produce or reproduce as a biofertilizer. Then environmental impact test and substantiation of microbes. A very important step is besides the benefits of these microorganisms, we have to check them for any harmful effects on environment, soil or plant health and also their authentication of the function. And then final step will be the large scale production of biofertilizer microorganisms. So this is the actual or the complete process of biofertilizer production in the industry. Now, the very important thing is how to apply biofertilizer. Friends, being microbiologist or being life scientist, to understand how biofertilizer can be produced or how it can work is a bit easy. But when the application part approaches, it is very tough to make aware the end user, that is farmer, how to use the biofertilizer. So there are four application types which can be used for the application of biofertilizer. Very first is seed treatment. Second is seedling root deep or seedling treatment. Third is main field application. And fourth is tuber inoculation. So let's have a look in detail for each and every application type. So seed treatment. Friends, seed treatment is the most common practice of applying biofertilizers in the agricultural field. So for this application, biofertilizers has to be mixed with 10% solution of jaggery. Jaggery solution is act as a binder of biofertilizer organisms on the seeds. So this slurry of jaggery and biofertilizer has to be poured on the seeds and we have to take care that each and every seeds should get coated with this mixture. Then after mixing and coating of this mixture, we have to air dry it in the shed. Friends, we have to take care not to carry out the drying process in the sunlight because sunlight may hamper and reduces the count of microorganisms. Generally, 750 grams to 1000 grams of biofertilizers is required per hectare area of the seed treatment. Seedling root dip. Seedling root dip is also a kind of easy application of biofertilizer, particularly for those crops in which seedlings are uprooted and transplanted from one place to another place. So seedling roots of the transplanted crops are treated for half an hour in a solution of biofertilizers before transplantation in the field. So friends, the application time is when the seedlings has uprooted from the one place and before they have been transplanted to the next place, we have to utilize this time gap for treating the seedling roots. Seedling required for one acre are inoculated using two to two and a half kg of biofertilizers. A bucket having adequate quantity of water is taken and the biofertilizer is mixed properly. So care should be taken that the water should water quantity should be adequate and not too much because otherwise it will dilute the biofertilizer too much. Seedling roots are then dipped in this mixture. We have to dip the seedling roots in this mixture of biofertilizer in view of getting a coated or a layer of biofertilizer on the plant roots. These seedlings are then transplanted as a regular practice. If we see this seedling root dip method is suitable for crops like tomato, rice, onion, coal crops and flowers or any other crops in which seedling uprooting and transplantation is a common practice. Third application type is main field application. This application type is mostly used for fruit crops like sugarcane and other crops where localized application is needed. So at the time of planting, approximate 20 gram of biofertilizer 
mixed with the compost and to be added in one sapling. So we have to provide a dose of around 20 gram of biofertilizer per crop. Same quantity of biofertilizer may be added at a plantation area once the seedlings get matures. So this will be a second dose of biofertilizer. Before use, the biofertilizer should be mixed with the desired amount of well decomposed granulated farmyard manure and to be kept for 24 hours. This step is important because friends, when the beneficial microorganisms uh, goes into the rhizosphere soil or in the agricultural soil, they need nutrients for their multiplication and they use organic carbon as a food for their multiplication purpose. And if we provide a decomposed farmyard manure as a carbon source, organic carbon source, it will help and boost the count of this biofertilizer microorganisms. The farmyard manure act as a nutrition medium and adjoint or carrier for the biofertilizers. Fourth type is self inoculation or tuber inoculation. This practice is conducted exclusively for the tuber crops like potato, sugarcane, sweet potato, turmeric, etc. So approximately 50 liters of water is taken in a drum and 4 to 5 kg of biofertilizer to be added and mixed properly. Planting materials required for one acre of land are dipped in this mixture. The tubers which we talked earlier of the potato, sugar cane or other tuber crops has to be mixed in this liquid for around half, a, half an hour to one hour. Tubers to be dipped in this mixture followed by drying in the shade and then plantation can be done. So biopesticide. Biopesticide is also a kind of similar term to that of biofertilizer that is a formulation made of living microorganisms. But the application of biopesticide is different from that of biofertilizers. So if we see biopesticide, the word bio means involving living organisms, pesticide which means a substance or mixture of substances which is intended for preventing, destroying or controlling any pest. So together it forms biopesticide which refers to an introduction or application of any living organism such as microorganisms including bacteria, fungi, nematodes, viruses, protozoa etc. to control plant pest or plant pathogens by biological or non-toxic means. So if we see for an example trichoderma which is a well-known microorganism used as a biocontrol agent or bacillus thuringiensis which is being used for the control of insects, plant insects. Bavaria is also a fungus which is used to control the insects, insect pathogen in the agricultural field. So biopesticide can be defined as a formulation based on microorganisms or any material developed from microbial or natural origin which can be used for control of agricultural pest and pathogen in eco-friendly or non-toxic manner. So for biopesticides, those microorganisms having antagonistic potential against plant pests or pathogens are used. <clears throat> Possible agents could be used as a biopesticide. Friends, as we discussed in the previous slide, biopesticides are developed from either living microorganisms or any material obtained from natural origin. So in living microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, viruses, 
or nematodes, which can be used as an entomopathogenic nematodes, can be used or as a natural material like plant extract or semiochemicals such as the signal molecules of pheromones or allelochemicals which can be used for trapping the insects in the field are used as a biopesticides. The challenges. So a biopesticide has to pass some challenges for actively used in the agricultural field. So let's have a look on what are these challenges. Very first is pesticide resistance. So friends, there are so many chemical pesticides are becoming failed day by day just because the pests and pathogens have developed resistance against those pesticides. This resistance can be developed because of the repetitive use of such a chemical pesticide and hence the time has come when even higher doses of such a pesticides cannot able to control such a pest and pathogen. While in case of biopesticides being a living entity, it is very difficult for the pest and pathogens to develop resistance against those biopesticides. Second is zero detectable residues. We can say in the era of global market, market is open for all, all over the world. So now farmer is become aware to get higher values for their products. And for this purpose, they have to export their agricultural produce to other countries. So to satisfy the export criteria, their produce should have lower detectable pesticide residues. So to fulfill this requirement, biopesticides are the most eligible entity or the material which does not left any residue behind in the agricultural produce. Sustainable food chain. If we see the use of biopesticide is found beneficial in all ways like economic, social, environmental and health concern. So biopesticide has also passes this criteria and integrated pest management. The fourth challenge Yes, the biopesticide has also successfully used in the integrated pest management program and has successfully passed the criteria. So we can see all these criteria has been uh, completely fulfilled by the biopesticides and the use of biopesticide is safe in all means. If we see the role or the advantages of biopesticides over chemical pesticides. So biopesticides are often very specific. So there is no risk or no danger of causing death or control of other beneficial living things. Often effective in very small quantities. Friends, as biopesticides are the living things, or living microorganisms, once they get entered in the field, after getting favorable conditions, they can multiply themselves and increase their count. So if even if we apply a small quantity in the field, they can multiply their own and increase their proportion or quantities in the environment. Often decompose quickly as they are living things. After completing the life cycle, they can degrade their self own or in unfavorable conditions, they can die or biodegrade themselves compatible with other control agents. Okay. Biopesticides can be used in combination with the other natural origin pesticides and hence synergistic effect of both the materials can give better results. It avoids the pollution problems caused by the conventional pesticides. Friends, we have seen there are so many cases of the poisoning when the farmer friends are applying by uh, chemical pesticides in the field they get exposed somehow to these chemicals and uh, hence they have to go through the bad health hazards so in that criteria biopesticides are completely harmless for the use in the field minimal or no human health risk if we handle these biopesticides carefully they are almost 
harmless to the human being or animal life. There are minimal or no incidences of the resistance development of the uh, biopesticides in their pests and pathogens. Little or no residues, as we saw in the previous slides, these biopesticides does not left any residue in the agricultural produce and hence the produce becomes very good quality and the export potential for the market resulting in the lower exposures or physical contact even the biopesticide comes in contact with the pest or pathogen for a short duration or for uh, less quantity they can be effective and as we saw biopesticides can be applied as a part of integrated pest management so friends let's have a look on the bio agents which can be used as a biopesticide so very first is bacillus thuringiensis i hope we all have heard the term bt cotton or bt brinjal in which bt belongs to the bacillus thuringiensis if we see history of bacillus thuringiensis it has been discovered in japan in early 20th century and it first became the commercial product in the france in 1938 so uh, this bacillus thuringiensis is used to control the lepidoptera pest which like american bollworm in cotton and stem borer in the rice the mode of action of bacillus thuringiensis is once this bacteria get ingested by the pest larvae it releases the toxin which is a protein named as a cry protein damages the mid gut of the pest and hence because of the starvation because that uh, pest cannot eat its food and eventually it gets killed the main sources for the production of pt preparations are the strains of the subspecies kurski galleria and dendrolimus So, next bio agent is Agrobacterium radiobacter. This bacteria produces a compound known as agrocin. It is used to treat the plant roots during transplanting, particularly for the control of crown gall or tumor in the plants. Crown gall or tumor is a disease in peaches, grape wine, roses, and various plants. caused by the soil borne pathogen agrobacterium tumefaciens friends this bacteria agrobacterium tumefaciens has an ability to pass on its plasmid dna to the plant cells once this foreign plasmid dna enters to the plant cells it forms a tumor and where this agrobacterium radiobacter our beneficial microorganism which produces a molecule known as agrocin it helps plant to systematically systematically control the colonization of these tumor forming bacteria next bio agents bio agent is pseudomonas fluorescens this bacteria is used to control the damping of which is caused by pythium species or rhizoctonia solani or few other plant pathogens it has ability to grow quickly in the rhizosphere friends pseudomonas fluorescens is a very well known bacteria bacterial species which is being used in the agriculture this is very robust microorganism and can be grow well in the environment agricultural environment next bio agent is trichoderma species Trichoderma is itself is a fungi, but it produces a compound which controls the growth of other fungi. Hence, we can call this fungus as a fungicide. It is effective against soil-borne diseases such as the root rot. This is also used against the silver leaf disease of fruit fruit trees by entering through the pruning wounds. So, this beneficial fungus can be used to control the other harmful fungi similarly there are so many bio agents 
such as metarhizium anisopli which infect the uh, some insects like spittle bugs rhinoceros beetles etc beveria bassena is also a kind of fungus beneficial fungus which controls the colorado potato beetle verticillium lecani is also a fungus which controls aphids and white flies Namoria aureli, which controls the soybean caterpillars, and friends, the list is very big. That there are so many beneficial bioagents which can be used as a biopesticide or biocontrol agents. Besides the living microorganism, there are some plant incorporated protectants which can be used as a biopesticide. So, pesticidal substances that plant produces. From the genetic material that has been added to the plant. As the pests feed on such a plants, they will eventually die. We can see as an example Bt cotton or Bt brinjal. As we saw in earlier side, uh, slides that Bacillus thuringiensis, which produces a protein, a toxic protein, which hampers the midgut of the pest. The, the gene responsible for the production of that protein can be transferred through genetic engineering to the plant gen genome and the plant will become capable to produce that protein when the paste will come and eat the plant leaf. The, mo the molecule, the protein will get inside the gut of the paste and uh, similar, it will similarly attack on the paste that it cannot eat and get killed due to the starvation. Botanical pesticides. This is the next category of biopesticides where naturally occurring plant material which may be crude preparation of the plant parts like powder or oil extracts along with the suitable carrier can be used to control the paste or pathogen such as neem powder or neem oil or rotenone and etc. So the concluding remarks of the discussions are biopesticides are similar in the application manner to that of chemical pesticide which means it can be applied similar to that of chemical pesticide like spraying or drenching. It can be available in different formulations such as powder, liquid, gel or other kind of formulations. It can be used to control soil as well as seed borne fungal pathogens. These biopesticides have high specificity, slow speed of action and require suitable growth conditions for the proper functioning. And finally, it needs a bit more research and awareness about the application and use of biopesticide. So friends, thank you very much for listening carefully and you can ask if you have any doubts or questions. Thank you. Today we are going to discuss on the last module for fermentation workshop and tenor is myself, Mr. Suresh Ji Shinde, Park Laboratory, Nasi. Outline of today's presentation is the introduction of the downstream processing. Basics of downstream processing. The downstream processing also part as a purification of the fermented broth or to obtain the final desired product in good quality and quantity. In this presentation for DSP, you can have many steps. There are some flows of DSP. There is a filtration and separation for the fermentation broth that is solid liquid separation. Next is ultrafiltration, microfiltration, then concentration precipitation and last but uh, that is drying and further after drying there should go for the product 
to make the finished good as per the requirement or application. It is called as blending and packing. Initially, we can go for what is the downstream processing. <clears throat> the product recovery from the fermentation broth is called as downstream processing. After leaving the fermenter, the broth or raw material or raw broth is treated in a series of steps or purifications or to produce the final product. Product recovery is often difficult and expensive purification account for 80 to 90 percent. If you are going to purify the product from each steps or each flow, it should be losses in the processing or the product may become a dilute or may giving the chemical various chemical treatments for precipitation or concentration and it should be hamper the some product recovery. The purification account 80 to 90 percent total processing cost is been utilized if your fermentation production can be manufactured on the certain amount of the cost it should be 80 to 90 percent cost to be utilized in the final purification process downstream processing depends on the nature of the product also it is depends on the quality and quantity to be produced in the fermentation broth or achieved in the fermentation broth physical and chemical or biological methods may be applicable in the purification or filtration or concentration steps commercial procedures include filtration centrifugation separation and flotation for the sale from the liquid and mechanical disruption of the sale product is intracellular or solvent extraction or chromatography or precipitation steps membrane filtration absorption and crystallization and drying is also the final stage as per the product requirement scientists trained in the chemistry or biochemistry or chemical engineering in the industrial chemistry play important role in designing the product recovery equipments and purification complete system for the product outputs what is the dsp process actually the downstream processing treats with the raw material generate useful product individually operations or steps within the process that change or separate the component are called unit operation if you are going to purify the desired product from the broth the broth contains many metabolites or many salts or many other impurities it can be isolated the separate desired product from all these impurities it is a very very difficult step and it should be required the specific method for the purification although the specific objectives and bioprocess vary from the factory to factory these processing scheme can be viewed as a series of component and operations which appears again and again in the different systems for example the most bioprocess involved in one or more of the following units in operations they are included centrifugation chromatography cooling system crystallization system dialysis system distillation system milling system mixing system precipitation system solid handling system and solvent extraction system these are the many steps involved in the purification method in a typical fermentation process raw materials are altered more significantly in the reaction occurring in the fermenter however the physical changes before and after the fermentation are also important to prepare the substrate for reaction and the extract of the purification desired product from the culture broth initially when we are going to design the media in the we are seeing in the previous slide that is if the substrate use is very very important factor to depends on the purification process will be smooth and efficient the fermentation broth are complex mixture of the component containing products in dilute solution in bioprocessing any treatment of the culture broth after fermentation is known as downstream processing 
the purpose of the downstream processing is to concentrate the product or purify the product or get a quality product in most of the cases required only physical modification should be required for purification steps the steps involved in the downstream processing first the step and crucial step that is the cell removal from the fermentation broth the common and first step of the product recovery is removal of the cell from the fermentation liquor or broth or media this is the necessary is the bypass itself is the desired product sometimes the products are the biomass production and the liquid is not in use or not in the our product so the biomass collection is also very very critical and the, for example of the biomass production of fermentation technique that is bakeries or some bio fertilizer which is gives direct uh, bacteria cell mass to the use of agriculture use or if the product is contained within the cell sometimes the product is intracellular it is contained in the inside the cell and for this we can separate the biomass for to give the lysis of the cell wall system in the further process the removal of cell from also various assist recovery product that is liquid phase filtration centrifugation and typical operation as well as cell removal in for cell removal we can use the filtration system centrifugation system separation systems which is separate the liquid and solid in two forms and get the clear liquid or get a clear biomass from fermentation broth the primary isolation is a wide variety of the technique is available for primary isolation of the fermentation product from cell to cell free broth the method used depends on the physical and chemical properties of the products which is going to obtain as a end product and surrounding materials the typically processes for primary isolation treat large volume of material and are relatively non selective however significant increase in the product quality and concentration can be accomplished unit operation such as used here for primary isolation is that absorption liquid extraction precipitation or other ultrafiltration are used for the primary isolations further step is that purification of the broth the process for purification are highly selective and and the separate product from the impurities and similar properties typically need for these operations are using that is chromatography ultrafiltration and fractional precipitation by various chemical compounds as like ammonium sulfate or others the final isolation the final purity required depend on the product application crystallization and followed by centrifugation or filtration and drying are typically operational used for high quality product such as the pharmaceutical and it is required to avoid the any cell or any contamination in the final product it should be incorporated the microfiltration system in the final product for pharmaceutical uses next the intracell how we can go for purify intracellular products particularly intracellular product we are first step using first step here is the cell harvesting that is the separation of cell mass or separation of solid liquid particles from the fermentation broth that is centrifugation microfiltration ultrafiltration you can go for detail in the next slides for this each steps the test for intracellular separation after cell separation we should require to disturb the cell disturb the cell wall to release the intracellular product from cell in this process we can use homogenization bid milling osmotic shock or pressure shock for the cell now there is available of cell destruction by some lysis enzyme for lysis of cell walls of the cell uh, various cells 
they are using lysozyme or maybe enzymatic treatment or heat shock also there. Cell debris removed. After that, we should require to remove the cell debris and getting the final product from the intracellular from intracellular processes. That is centrifugation. Again, you can use the centrifugation, microfiltration, vacuum filtration, and press filtration to remove the cell debris from the getting final broth from cell disruption. The next extracellular product, how can we can process for the extracellular products? That is first is a biomass removal. Here we can get a biomass by vacuum filtration, centrifugation, microfiltration, ultra filtration, press filtration, candle filtration or flotation. Sometimes there are heavy broth or heavy mycelia are available you can get in immediately settle down and flotation step figure use here. There is a vacuum filtration you can use for the vac rotary vacuum filter. Centrifugations are available from smaller size to higher size. Micro filtration is a 0.2 micron candles filtration which is passing the bacteria and will, bacteria will be sustained in the filter and clear liquid will go out. Ultra filtration you can pass the media from ultra filtration you can get the only metabolites and here we can use the cut up system for molecular weight. Press filtration is the normal filtration. It's a limitation is that the press filtration is doesn't go for 5 micron to 10 micron sizes. We can see that the definitions of various filtration in the next slide. <coughs> Next step after biomass removal is product extraction by aqueous two steps, organic solvent, expanded bed absorption, batch absorption, supercritical fluids, reverse micelles, and extractive distillations. Sometimes the products can be extracted by direct from the broth by these methods. Next step is concentration. After getting the filter clear liquid from the fermentation broth, the next step is to go get a concentrate for this product. In this process, we can use ultra filtration, evaporation, reverse osmosis, precipitation, crystallization, extraction, absorption, and distillation. When the common broth and this third method after getting the clear liquid or final processes from last two slides, the product is going to further purification in final purification steps and these steps are common for all products. That is final purification is required the chromatography that is affinity on ion exchange base or reverse phase base. Dye filtration electrolysis and electrophoresis. Next is dehydration of the solvent removal. Here we can use final drying method that is spray drying, freeze drying, tray drying, fluid bed drying and drum drying. All these are to remove the water from your product and Null product get a concentrated powder in form of finished product or in form of intermediate product. This is a complete diagram which is going to flow how to flow for each product to purify in the processes. All these slides are we can discuss in earlier in previous slides, but here I can see the flow chart completely. That is bioreactor, the broth is coming from the bioreactor out. That is intracellular product, that is extracellular product. Here is biomass removal, here is cell harvesting, all the centrifugation steps. And this is again that intracellular, we should require cell disruption, cell debris removal. If it did not removed by cell debris and directly going for extraction, you can go for extraction also. Here is a biomass removal. And after biomass removal, you can go for extraction or you go for concentration. Here also the same go for conservation and after this, these are the common methods for purification steps. 
Here we can get the final solids by after spray drying and the drying methods. And this is an intermediate product for the application. This is a concentrated product we can obtain from the this purified product. The next step, the purification techniques. Purification techniques are filtration, precipitation, liquid liquid two phase separation, chromatography, and centrifugation. In filtration, you can use many type of filter. Next is downstream processing flow chart. We can go for the some case studies here. That is because of the complexity and large scale manufacturing processes communicating information about this system requires special methods. Here is a some flow diagram shows that simplified pictorial representation of the process and are used in the present relevant process information and data. The flow sheet vary in the complexity for simple block diagram, highly complex systematic drawing showing main and auxiliary process equipment such as pipes, walls, pumps, and bypass loops. Here we can see the penicillium production flowchart actually. We can see the fermenter here we can show. After seed fermenter, this is going to the fermentation tank. Two fermentation tanks are shown in the pictorial diagram. You can nutrient continuously feed up. This is the free batch, uh, free batch or batch fermentation. Here is a surge tank. Here is a rotary vacuum filter. You can see spend it out from the rotary vacuum. Solvent we can add for centrifugation. Extraction step is here. After filtration, the clear liquid will be centrifuged and spent again removed by the centrifugation. Here we can use the one filter and again centrifugal extractor should be used. Means two times they have extracted the material and then go for evaporated. Here your pressure, we can get a slurry form and then again it will be solvent. Extraction should process is followed there. And after crystal wash, that is evaporator and you get a crystalline potassium penicillin here. After that, the liquid is going to mix tank, filter then, then porcelain SCLA solution mixed in tank, then solvent centrifugation screen and here again some type of proactive penicillin product you can get here. And here is a vacuum and here freeze drying is a final step. Means here is inhaling many equipments in the purification. Here is a rotary vacuum filter, centrifuge, here again one centrifuge, here one filter press, then evaporator, then crystallization, then evaporator, again there is a crystallization by solvent extraction, then mixing tank and then again centrifuge should use screen centrifuge use here and finally that is a spray drying for to get the final penicillin powder <coughs> the next slide is that the what is the filtration system in filtration solid particles are separated from the filter media or fermentation broth. Here we can use the filter cloth which retains the particles and these cloths are available from the various sizes from 1 micron to 50 micron or 100 micron also. Solids are deposited on the filter and the deposit the filter cake increases in the depth pose and perform using either vacuum or positive pressure across the filter to separate fluid from the solid is called as filtration pressure rock. Filtration broth can be difficult to filter because of the small size of gelatinous material or nature in the cell or viscous or non-viscous non-tonic behavior of the broth. Sometimes the broth is coming of the some glycerol behavior or oily nature. It should be very difficult to filter from the filter cloths. Most microwave filter cakes are compressible that is porosity of the cake decline as this can be major problem causing reduce the filtration rate and greater losses of the products. 
from a solid liquid mixture by focusing the liquid through resistance to further filtration system. The filtration can be positive pressure equipments. The pressure differences exerted pressure drop across the filter increases. This is the pictorial diagram of the filter press. You can see here, here is a one nozzle shown the material in and one is a material out. The material is going in from middle size of the filter filters and sometimes it is the middle that is pads or cloths are putting in each between in each plates and the material will passing these plates and coming out after filtering it. From here we can say the hydraulic systems which in keep the close or keep the pressurized to plates and this is the pictorial diagram of the filter press. Next step that is the centrifugation. The centrifugation is also used a separate material different from density wise when it is forced greater to gravity and desired. In processing, centrifugation is used to remove the cell from fermentation broth to eliminate the cell debris to collect the precipitate and prepare the fermentation media such as clarification of the molasses or production of the wort from the brewing. Centrifugation is the most effective and to remove the particles to be separated in large amount and large viscosity is also low. The density difference between particles and fluid is great. It is also assisted a large centrifugal radius and high rotational speed in centrifugation of biological solids such as a cell. The particles are very small. The viscosity of the medium can be relatively high and the particle density is very similar to the suspending fluid. Here we can see the liquid is going from inside it will be continuously moving centrifugation high speed. Now the centrifuge is available up to the 25,000 speed also from 2000-3000 RPM to 25,000 RPM as that's why the very very fine particles of the media or myoma cell can be separated and this is a pictorial diagram of the centrifuge. You can put the media continuously feeding from this side. Inside there is a bag from outside and material should be coming out from the overflow by this and all the cake or biomass will be settled on the bag at the bottom side or surface of the walls. Sometimes you can use the candle filter for the small volumes also. Single candle inside or the material goes inside bags but this is a limitations and this is would not give the pressures because the candle can be break or broke and uh, cloth also been broke. This is a vertical centrifugation filter. Here we can see the vertical centrifuge, vertical separator that is inside there is a bowl and outside is the cell can be collect the cake. It is also the same method of the gravitational on the bigger side is a smaller bowl side. Next step is the cell disruption. For the products such as enzyme and recombinant protein which remains in the biomass, the cell distraction must be carried out to release the desired material. This is called as extracellular enzymes or extracellular products. Variety of the method is available to disturb the cell. Mechanical option includes grinding and abrasive high speed agitation also, high pressure pumping also or ultrasonic effect. Non-mechanical methods such as osmotic shock, freezing, thawing, and enzymatic digestion of the cell wall, and treatment which solvent and detergent can also be applied. High pressure pump incorporate an adjustable wall with restricted orifice through which cells are forced as a pressure up to 550 atm. The homogenizer is a general method and applicability of the cell destruction. Although the homogenization wall can be become blocked when used in the highly filamentous or fungal organisms. Here we can see the what is the pictorial diagram for cell disruption. There is a sheet, a wall sheet from both the side. You can passing the cells here and you can press this by the osmotic pressure and impact ring here is form and then wall will be pressing the liquid pressure and the cell will be get disturbed. 
Next is the two phase separation requirement. Mean it is called as extraction also. It is a simple and traditional method for to separate or extract the material from inside the solid media or broth. The liquid extraction of the fermentation product component dissolved in a liquid or recovered by transfer into appropriate solvent. Extraction of penicillin from the aqueous broth using solvent such as butyl acetate, amyl acetate, methyl isobutyl ketone and isolation of erythromycin using phenyl, pentyl and amyl acetate etc. Example. Solvent extraction techniques are also applied for recovery of steroids, purification of vitamin B12 from microbial sources and isolation of alkaloids such as morphine and codeine from raw plant material. Techniques are being developed for aqueous two-phase extraction of phase molecules. Aqueous solvent which form two distinct phases provide favorable conditions for separation of proteins, cell fragment and organelles with protection of their biological activity. Here we can see the pictorial diagram of the two-phase separation that we can feed here in the tank, the material or solvent and material and interface is putting here, raffinate is putting here and the cell mass passing through this sieve and get an extract from there. Next is a chromatography. <coughs> chromatography is a separation procedure for resolving mixture and isolating component. The basis of chromatography is differential migration that is selective radiation attraction of the solute molecule during passes through the bed or resin particles. The solvent flows through the column. The solid travel at a different speed depending on their relative affinity for the resin particle. As a result, they will be separated and appears in the collection at the end of the column. At a different time, chromatography methods available for purification of proteins, peptides, amino acids, nucleic acid, alkaloid, vitamin, steroid, and many other biological materials, including absorption of the chromatography. Partition chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, and gel chromatography is affinity chromatography. These are the type of chromatographies available as per the product design. Here is the picture diagram. We can see that is a material passing through the various chromatography technique. The solute will be passing. Some solutes have a, depends on the their affinity. You can easily get immediately get out. Sometimes it, it will take a time or solute get a Various resins can be and chromatogram should be formed either like these products and this. And this is a time consuming process and also getting pure results. Next is a distillation stage. Some products as like ethanol and others can be purified by distillation method. Distillation is simply defined as a process in which a liquid or vapor mixture of two or more substances is separated into its component fraction of desired purity by the application to remove by the heat. Here we can see the pictorial diagram that the bottom you can get the heat on heat from their heat exchanger or maybe steam. It will be passing through the bottom and the shifting reaction here the material feed will be getting pure from inside the central side and reaching the rectification section is the reflux here condenser we put up the top bottom and reflux drum will get and distillation will get from the outside so each and in, uh, in your laboratory also you can see the how distillation units and the same functioning is applicable on the big side in the industrial distillation have a big column the product is put in from the lower side or middle side it will get being uh, steam to be passing from from bottom and it will be getting operated and condensed form at the upper top places and it will be collected by the distillation system. Next is the evaporation. Evaporation is the removal of portion of the solvent or water by boiling the solution. But this is the limitations having of the some enzyme or some metabolic product are 
heat sensitive. In this case, we should have a critical process for evaporation of the such type of products by writing the type distillation, evaporation, crystallization, etc. etc. Any material which does not get altered in the process is called a substances balance. The quantities of the steam are evaluated. Crystallization is carried out when the solid product is to be recovered from its solution and other components. This is done by supersaturating the solution by one or more of the three methods, namely cooling, evaporation, and adiabatic cooling. If the solubility of the solute increases to a larger extent, which increases in the temperature, strong function of temperature and saturated solution becomes supersaturated by simple cooling and temperature reduction. The solubility of a solute plays an important role in the crystallization operations. You can see the pictorial diagram here also. You can have a evaporator. This is a distillation and evaporation have differences between. Here, you cannot be distilled. You can evaporate the water directly and get a solid media in slurry or some solid form. Next is a drying. It is spread drying. Drying is refer to operation in which the moisture of the substances is removed by thermal means the removal of relativity and small amount of water or other liquids from the solid material. Drying is one of the oldest method of preserving of the food. Primitive societies practiced by the drying of meat and fish with sun long before recorded history. Many times we can dry in the many things in the our household also some food products we can keep in the sun drying and it will be get a dried form. We will remove the water. Drying is only the remove water from the solids. It is a final step. And there is a designing of the spray drying. Here is a product will be spraying or inserting from the top and it will be get dried till getting the product from the bottom side. We can give the hot air from this side. There is a HIPAA filter for to get a filter here. It is a duct to provide the hot air in chamber. This is the drying chamber. Product is spraying from the top and it will be getting powder from bottom side. This is the exhaust fan because we can give the hot air from this side. So it should be going out from other side. Here also we put in the back filter to collect the some particles to go by lower molecular weight or low weight. So it will be collected in the back form. Next is the, what is the process design criteria for purification or downstream processing? The basis of separation in the by separation processes, the biological products are separated based on one or more of the following factors. That is the filtration, Membrane separation and centrifugation is a totally depend on the particle size or broth containing the size of the molecules or maybe metabolites. The second is density. That is centrifugation, sedimentation and flotation are the depends on the density of the particles. Diffusivity, the membrane separation is a diffusivity criteria means that is it is a cutoff system for molecular weight. These membrane separations are only pass or only sustain now the cutoff of the molecular weight of the molecules means enzymes all enzymes are having molecular weight more than 15,000 Dalton in it. So we can use the 15,000 cut off membrane for enzymes. So all below molecular weight particles are passing through the membrane and all above 15,000 mole Dalton molecular weights particles are sustained in the final product. The shape, the certification filtration and sedimentation also depends on the shape of the molecules or shape of the particle or shape of the metabolites. Product. Polar polarity is playing the role in extraction, chromatography, and absorption system. 
solubility also very important for extraction, precipitation, and crystallization states. Electrostatic charge, it is using in the absorption, membrane separation, and electrophoresis. And finally, the volatility example that is distillation or membrane distillation. Membrane distillation with the phase change is very, very important. And lastly, physical form separated into bioseparation for final purification. What is the DSP process flow? It is that biomass product separation, then product purification. After product purification, you can get a effluent water or effluent for disposal. Next step, concentration, crystallization or drying and fill finish. Fill finish is getting only intermediate products here and concentrated product here. Then storage of property and stability studies. Field trials, when the product getting in hand, so required field trial, it is for as per application. Then FDA approval or product license from FDA. Then marketing strategies and then sales. This is the product flow chart. In DSP, when you are going to high purity, you can see in the last slide also, you get a high purity, the volume should be less. You should get a less purified material, the volume should be higher. There is a including cell separation, capture, intermediate purification, polishing, and finish. This is a slide I have just demonstrated how the filtrations are being carried out or what is the criteria of filtration. Is a dead end filtration actually? The filtration between 0.1 micron to 1 micron is called as microfiltration. Below 0.1 micron to 0.001 micron is called as ultrafiltration. And this is aphrosic molecular weight granular proteins you can see use here. And then below 0.001 micron, you can go for nanofiltration. And before that, you can go for reverse. This is complete system is called as the reverse osmosis system. Falling membrane polarization, cost of this equipments, protein aggregation, precipitation and degradation are the main factors are involved in this filtration system. And this slide shows you the total differences between microfiltration, ultrafiltration, filtration and nanofiltrations. For 1 micron to 10 micron, we can see the normal filtration or plate filtration or cloth filtration is used. And 10 microns above, we can use the normal filtration that in household, we can use that filtration systems. This is a complete flow chart for a single process of antibiotic productions. We can see each and every steps here. That is seed fermenter, fermenter, fertilizer, curd, then here fermenter, in between that is Hot water, we can circulate the material, we can get them. this, this receiving tank, then centrifugation, filter press, then centrifuge, then again crystallization, again evaporation, and these are the seed preparation steps. Here concentration, then absorption, and bacterial filter here, means microfiltration, and finally bulk dryer, and get the final product. This is a pictorial diagram of the one product process flow in the fermentation. This is not a fermentation. Fermentation DSP includes the set of products, set of equipments completely. That's why it is cost of the product is getting 80 to 90 percent of the total product value. Lastly, but in the mention, it is required that testing the analysis of the your obtained product is very, very important. Without testing, you cannot be judged the product. Your product is a quality product and getting good results. Here is the assay that investigate the procedure and 
qualitative assay of quantity to measuring of the presence of amount of a desired product or functional equity of the target entity which can be drug or biochemical substances organic sample in this steps we can test it by chemical assay immuno assay microbiological assay or bioassay is the characteristics of the good assay method is that depends its sensitivity specificity repeatability and reproductivity validity and stability of the products all these factors are most most important in the dsp and each and every step of dsp we should require to check this all the parameters chemical analysis is differ the analysis of simple material called as analysis there is two type of analysis that is qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis qualitative you can check in extraction distillation precipitation and other methods that are determine the physicochemical properties only but in qualitative volume or weight of the substances or desired product should be required physicochemical assay technique that is photometry technique calorimetry technique spectrophotometry technique fluorometry technique flame photometry chromatography column chromatography paper chromatography thin layer chromatography gas chromatography and high performance liquid chromatography can be incorporated for the testing as per the requirement of the product the bias of biological assay is the definition comparative assay assessment of the relative potency and latest compound to the standard compound and leaving the bacteriological tissue qualitative measurement of the amount of the active particle or principal the substances in the pharmaceutical preparation on biological material using suitable biological system in this comparison of chemical and bioassay that is it is bioassay is less precise more time consuming active constitute and structure not known more sensitive more precise less accuracy and time consuming and false results may get repeatability of the test more and more time for the bioassay thanks friend today we are complete our modules of all the fermentation techniques here and the next for one one hour session we can conclude the all the things and your welcome for your questions and answers in the next steps so thanks and we will meet again and again thanks